Yo, 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 what is up everyone? Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I appreciate you taking the time to do so. If you're new here, my name is Joseph Dooley. I am a graphic designer and a self-talk calligrapher. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over some simple tips to help you improve your calligraphy instantly. And these tips for beginners and or whatever level you are at with your calligraphy. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, and in this part, this is tip number one. It is gonna be the proper grip on how to hold the pen correctly. So with holding a brush pen, and if you're wondering about what pen it is that I'm using, it is a Tombow Furunosuke brush pen. This is the hard tip. And they do I believe have a soft tip as well. So the way how I go about holding my brush pen, I keep it loose, which meaning like when I say loose, I'm not holding it super tight, meaning I'm not pressing down with these. Oh, me. I'm not pressing down with these three fingers very hard. With these two fingers here, I am being light meaning not applying much pressure, if any at all. And the grip that you have on a pen, it'll affect your strokes and your writing. And so let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you. This is with holding a strong grip. So I'm just gonna write, uh, let's just write the word love. And let me flip this over. All right, and as you see, this right here, this is with a hard grip. And then now I'm going to, uh, desk is a little dusty, but anyhow. And now I'm going to write the same word, but I'm not going to have such a hard grip. And this is a loose grip. So there are pretty drastic changes you could see. So if you see here with the L, like this L and this L, the L is a lot heavier and then with the O and the V connection compared to this one, which is a lot more fluid and a lot more flow to it, it's not as constricted. And also another thing I will say about having a nice loose grip is that whenever you get the flourishing down, it is a lot simpler to do because your hand, you just move it across the, pap across the paper very easily and you're not straining any of these muscles here and or the muscles here. Now, this portion we're going to talk about the upstrokes and downstrokes so with the upstrokes it would be just like this hold on the camera's not focusing there we go and this right here it is a good skill To really just practice this so the upstrokes are okay let's say we're doing the letter A that's the upstroke downstroke is thick right here this is this letter is a great example of how doing this or practice could really have it to where you understand like how the nib on your pen is working and also getting more comfortable with doing the up and the downstrokes because the downstroke would be, I'm gonna do the letter A lowercase. So this will be the upstroke and that's the downstroke. Up, down. So started here, nice and thick, lifted up, came thin, and, and now going back up is thick and then somewhat medium pressure 
to end it off. So you do it all in one, one quick motion. And this is more so expressive than just doing a simple letter like that, letter A. This, like these two here, are more advanced in doing this. And the marker is a little dry, as you can see. But the same, princi same principle applies, coming up thin, more pressure, and then lifting up and keeping thin, and then adding this portion to the letter. You know, it's really practicing and seeing what looks good to you and what overall result that you're trying to have. In mastering these basics, before you move to writing letter, like full words, you got to go through and practice letters, meaning doing just drills repeatedly. And this is the way how you can go from doing the basics here to getting this and this and then even this and so these are some of the most important things doing drills and getting comfortable using your pins and now let's move on to tip number three all right and now some practice drills not using a ruler to draw the guidelines this is just a quick demonstration so essentially let's say you have a grid that is at an angle like this and you want to practice your letters and you are going to want to use this grid to your benefit so we're going to do the letter E so if we do a lowercase e and keep the e contained within this box, this is just a quick example. There's many different ways out there to use a grid to your benefit, but this would also really help with just overall, like the letter layout and the sizing. And depending on what level you are at. And as you see, now keeping it within that, these three boxes allowed the consistency, consistency to remain. And then you could even add on some additional stuff to the letter. And then even the same with the capital E. Keep it contained in the box. And just look how neat that is neat and contained very very well done and this is just a simple practice sheet if y'all are interested i can actually create some printable sheets and make them available for you so let me know in the comments below let's move on to the next tip so wrapping this video up i want to mention about choosing the right tools the type of tools that would work for me may not work for you and this is just part of the exploration that you have to do to see what works for you and there's many tools out there widely available i will be blunt and say that there will always be tools available from companies that are willing to take your money but the tools may not be for you. The beginner friendly tools that I would recommend 
is getting this brush pen. It is very affordable, not a pen that will break the bank. And then the next one I would say, find a brush pen that is dual tip. This is pretty much another version of the Tombo, was it Tombo dual tip? But I feel that these are better. And then after that, you get more comfortable using the tools. This Zig brush pen here, y'all see me use it a lot. That this is a lot more advanced, I will say. The reason is because this is not just a pen already put together. You have to buy the body separate, you buy the cartridge separate, and then it's like that. And then you're gonna have your drawing pens like this, which could be used obviously for calligraphy too. And then you got your dual tip pens just like this, which is a bullet tip. All of these pens give different effects. You have to choose and figure out what works for you. This is a pilot brush pen. As you see how it writes, totally different effect. And these are just a few of my brush pens that I like, you know, other than my pilot parallel pens and automatic pens. Y'all know what those look like. Let's recap this video. All right, now to recap the video, before I do that, I wanna firstly say thank you so much for watching. Making it through this video, I hope this video was helpful. Remember, practicing, choosing the right tools. I will say that there are no right tools. The right tools are the tools that work for you. And practicing the basic strokes, knowing how and when to apply con consistent pressure to get the overall result that you want. And then remember with all this to have fun. Having fun is the most important thing. If you need to take a break, do so. Because this is not going to be something you're, gonna, you're going to get overnight. It's gonna take time. You'll get bored with it. You wanna move on. And then you may wanna go on to the next hobby or the next thing you want to try out. I just wanted to let you know, I appreciate you once again. Thank you so much for watching. Hope these tips help you on your calligraphy journey. Don't forget to like this video. Leave me a comment below. And if you have any questions, you know, I'm willing to answer them. And subscribe for more tips and tutorials. Peace and love everybody.